It is a hard call to listen to. It is. It yeah. is. We've listened to it several times, including last night. Tanya Eiser joining us right now. And, and Jason and I were, were talking to you. You've had a chance to read the, the comments this morning on Facebook, Twitter. Um, there are hundreds and hundreds of mm -hmm. them. What do you think as far as the comments go that you've seen so far here? Because we're pretty far down the road. Uh, this isn't right after this happened. People, a lot of people already have a very firm idea of what they think happened in that apartment that night. And does this 911 call change that? I think it depends on where you are. Mm. Um, I think if you already had your mind made up about what you thought, you saw what you wanted to see either mm -hmm. way. And then I think for people that are hadn't made up their minds, I think it could make a real difference. Just for a little bit of perspective here, so often we hear these 911 calls not long after uh, something occurs, uh, and that's in traditional cases. Can you kind of spell out the difference when it's a police-involved case like this? Is it usually this hard to get a call when it's a police-involved shooting? Well, it's often not easy. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you that in, in controversial cases, we have seen situations where police chiefs have released dash cam and other things mm -hmm. to quell and, and to give the public more context, more information. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk more uh, with Tanya coming up during our six o'clock hour, including a question I know a lot of you have about um, rendering aid during that 911 call from former officer Amber Geiger. So we'll talk to her here in just a few. Thanks, Tanya. See you in just a minute, Tanya.